Hello, this is Jeff Beaudry. I'd like to introduce you to this video uh, in which we're going to talk about the connections of right science to the uh, instructional strategy of using mind maps and concept maps. One of the things that we're trying to do is to um, use the right science model as a basic starting point, the do, talk, write model. What, we're tr what we'd like to do, what I'm extremely excited about, is the idea of introducing visual learning into this process where we're going to have the learners generate their own maps, their own visuals, so that this process will be extended so that we have a do, think, reflect, map, and we talk we refine, reflect, and remap. If you want to talk some more, collaborate, and then ultimately we're writing. So we're seeing this as introducing a concrete strategy in which learners can take their thinking, represent the thinking in visual terms as a concept map, and then do some talking about that as a way to develop their ideas in a deeper conceptual way in advance or along with their writing. When it comes to visual thinking, uh, especially in early childhood and early elementary and the elementary grades, we want to be very active in trying to make sure that students' visual, uh, very pictorial and graphic thinking is included in the kind of work that we do, especially when we're trying to make that connection between words, thinking, picturing, drawing, and writing something which is very much at the heart of a lot of, of science literacy. So visual thinking here has a couple of maps that we're going to use today. We're going to use mind maps, which are developed around a central idea and the ideas radiate, and oftentimes these are used for brainstorming webs. We also want to tr use concept maps, which are going to be uh, have more structure to them. That is, they're going to be organized from the top down. And they're also going to have linking words put on those arrows or on those lines that link concepts and the graphic um, uh, symbols together. So let's try a mind map. We're going to do one uh, that's going to talk about me, a little bit about me as a person, then maybe as a learner. So in the middle, we're going to put me. There's a picture of me. I'm Jeff. Um, I see myself as a teacher. I teach adults at the... A graduate level at the University of Southern Maine. Um, some of the courses that I teach, I teach statistics, a very fun word to pronounce and to try to, to even more fun to try to think about. I like to write. I actually do like to um, sit down and write articles and um, longer articles and books and um, a video and so forth. Uh, kind of comes into that uh, realm of writing. And some of my other uh, areas, I'm sure you're not surprised, of photography, which kind of brings together that idea of being visual uh, and using the, the sense of capturing images. So I could add to this, too. I could Up here, I could say um, I like to bicycle. So we could add that right here. As you can see, we're building that radial map. I like to swim. And if you push me really hard, I'll run. So there you go. So as a learner, my visual sense comes into play, as you can see here. So I really do like to play with visuals. I like to combine different types of graphic elements. I like to combine text with, work, with visuals. Um, and I like to do so so that I can become a better teacher. So you get a little bit of idea of how my mind map works. I've made a map of myself and redrawn the map and revised the map so that it reflects more of who I am as a learner. So as you can see, I'll start at the top. I like to collaborate. I like to interact. I like to teach ideas. So that means in those groups, sometimes I'll be thinking, what is it I can contribute to the group? I like to quantify things, uh, something that comes out in my um, use of surveys or statistical analysis. I'm a voracious reader. 
This has very, been very, very important to me as a learner, maybe the most important thing uh, for me since the beginning of my um, career and my growth as a learner. Um, multimedia, I love to design multimedia. I use visual learning and mapping when I can to support my learning and to extend my ideas. And I like to and really practice the idea of listening. So now that you've seen a mind map, now we need to make the skillful move, a very challenging move, but skillful move to a concept map in which the ideas or concepts are organized in a hierarchy, usually, although not always, from top down or from um, in some way orienting you to the main idea or the main purpose or whatever is that chief driving question. Uh, and then you have l different levels of supporting ideas or subordinate ideas and examples. And you can see I've taken and rearranged these different aspects or different um, descriptors of who am I into the learner, the teacher, and personal interests. And you can see how those have been reorganized so that there is a sense of the big idea being the learner, Jeff, and then these categories of, when, uh, of how we understand who I am. So now it's time for you to um, think and to do some creating of yourself in response to this focus question. Why is visual learning important? Use this guiding question as this uh, mind map shows you uh, to put in the middle and to then fill in some of your ideas around uh, the, your answers as to why visual learning is important. So you've had a few minutes to uh, develop your maps. Why don't you go ahead and share those and I'll share mine in just a moment. I'm sure you've had a lively discussion about your concept maps. Here are some of the things that I noticed when I was thinking about this question. Why is visual learning important? First of all, the ideas of visual learning uh, allow you to play with ideas and you can move them around. Changing them isn't so hard. A map show what I think in my own way. So this is an individualized uh, expression uh, when learners generate their own maps. I can see connections with other ideas. So making a connection is as easy as drawing a line which connects. It's more fun than a worksheet. Uh, something new and novel, of course, is always going to attract attention. But this is something that may attract more than attention. It may attract some deep student thinking and involvement on the part of many of your students. I can use pictures in my writing and help pictures sometimes help me think and remember. So one of the things about mapping is that it does help with short and long-term memory. This has been studied um, over and over again and uh, mapping is seen as a high impact strategy by the recent research by John Hattie. So this is a reason why we want to delve into this and incorporate this into practice. So let's move on to the two tasks we have to uh, work with today. So in this second part of our professional development day, we're going to apply these mapping ideas to some scientific investigations. On the one hand, we have the collisions investigation that's designed for early childhood, kindergarten. And the second one is the fourth grade uh, investigation when cars collide. Here is the first investigation for a kindergartner um, under speed and direction in the STEM Scopes website um, called Collision. And here is the second investigation in the transfer of energy and collision category uh, due to scientific investigations called When Cars Collide, and this is for fourth graders. So here we have the two tasks, those two investigations I mentioned, the one for kindergarten on collisions and the other one at fourth grade for when cars collide. Let's take a look at each one individually. For the collisions investigation, the focus question or what prompts students thinking would be what happens when balls hit each other. Over on the right side is the list of vocabulary words. Well, we call this the parking lot. And this is what's um, sometimes arguable in terms of a strategy. I believe it's important to put vocabulary out for students to see. I mean, another um, way of doing this would be for them to brainstorm ideas uh, and then add to them. Anyway, a skillful teacher will know each of those strategies. 
we'll be able to apply them. In this case, I'm suggesting that for this strategy, for building this map, especially for early childhood, that it might help to have the vocabulary present and to work with it. You can add to it, you can use words multiple times in your map as well. So it's a flexible thinking activity. Don't think of it as the constraints of mapping. So here's the focus question and the list of vocabulary words, the parking lot for the, the when cars collide. Focus question shifts because the investigation is uh, sh uh, changing as well. This is a focus question which reads, what happens when cars hit each other? The, there's a different experimental design. There, the variables have changed so that there'll be a little bit more complexity there. The list of parking lot terms um, is very similar uh, with some changes there. So again, you can use words more than once. Um, you can also add words as you see fit or as they come up in conversation as well. So here are the directions for your mapping activity. Use the focus question. Use the vocabulary in the list, the parking lot. To prepare for the map, either use post-it notes and write each vocabulary term on the post-it note, or write all the terms or type all the terms onto a piece of paper and then cut them out. You need to be able to move these words around, and it's important that we start with something that everyone has, pencil, paper, scissors, glue, post-it notes, whatever is available. We don't necessarily need to move to an electronic form. Probably want to do that later, not now. So in groups of two, use the focus question. Use the words in the parking lot on the vocabulary list. Start to arrange these in a way that uh, captures the big ideas and supporting ideas and be flexible, add to the list, use words more than once, and use your discussion and dialogue to help build this uh, concept map. So I hope you um, had the opportunity to develop con your concept map around the collisions investigation or when cars collide. Um, you should have had a chance to um, talk about your map with others, especially beginning with your partner and then going out so that we could share those maps, uh, maybe as a gallery, but certainly as a tabletop walk. Um, and we can compare the maps across investigations to see what kinds of different conceptual development and expectations there are from kindergarten to fourth grade. This is an important alignment and I think um, an important way of showing um, how this strategy can help us look at these two different, this one idea in two different stages of development. So I suggested uh, four ideas for reflection on this activity. Uh, talk about your map with others. How does the conversation about your map help um, understanding? Uh, how could you use these mapping activities in your classroom? This one or, or ideas that you might have uh, that are similar. Uh, and also, how does this mapping strategy um, fit in to the uh, right science process that as, as a pre-writing strategy? So here's a summary to this idea about visual learning and how it affects our teaching. First of all, it helps learners engage in their thinking, that brainstorming. Second of all, it's a tool for deeper learning, uh, organizing, and then transferring to writing. And it also is a guide for developing uh, systems thinking, uh, creative expression, and design thinking. So let me conclude by delving into this idea of um, concept mapping and the critical thinking flow uh, and relating it to right science. Um, right science um, is the target and maps will help students do uh, at least three things well. One, use the key vocabulary that's intended for this lesson, that's intended to be developed. Two, they'll be able to use that vocabulary in a way that helps them identify the key term or the main concept. We're really going to work on what is the main idea as a way to begin um, their writing or to, for them to understand their writing and it's shown in their map. Another uh, 
way in which it's useful is in helping students uh, see the, the next level. So if we're saying uh, there's a supporting topic, that topic then becomes uh, a subordinate level or that next level, and then there's that detail level. Uh, or it could be written to answer questions um, in a sequence like, what did you see? Uh, and what, is, uh, what evidence do you have uh, that supports your claim? So it could be helped to scaff, it could be used as a scaffolding technique as well. Um, and finally, it's a easily, easily edited, easily changed product. So it's a formative product that can change along the way and adapt and improve in students' hands in a relatively quick and efficient way. Again, this is Jeff Beaudry. I'd like to thank you for participating in the mind mapping and concept mapping for right science activity today. I hope this helps you um, implement a, a new or a friendly and, and useful strategy uh, into your classroom and certainly hope that there's some um, impact or some effects on your students so that they can improve uh, in their uh, development and their growth as learners. Thank you once again.